I'm Deborah Dixon, and we're here at the Power Networking Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And you're watching The Gold Profile, and we're excited to have with us Dr. Evelyn Bethune granddaughter of Mary McLeod Bethune and just a wonderful educator in her own right. So um, we're glad to have you. So I want you to talk to us a little bit about your background and some of the projects that you're working on because I know you're working on a book about your grandma, right? Yes. So, well, um, of course, I grew up in Daytona Beach uh, on the campus of Bethune-Cookman, um, have gone to college in fact, graduated from an HBCU, Bethune-Cookman, awesome. of course. Uh, worked for IBM for a little while. Uh, came back home, worked for the state of Florida, and then decided that I was not a worker bee mm. and that I really mm. needed to work for myself. Right. And right. I've had my own business pretty much for the last 25 years. Wow. Um, okay. I, my background's accounting and finance, um, but I'm also a political scientist. So, you know, I'm having the time of my life right now. Oh, uh, but I, my brothers and I uh, decided to start a foundation, uh, the Mary McLeod Bethune Educational Legacy Foundation. And it is solely responsible for keeping grandmother's spirit alive. You know, it's her grandchildren. And we feel we have a responsibility to make sure that her legacy continues and in a powerful way because she gave us a lot to stand on. And the book talks about not just my grandmother, but my great-grandparents, Samuel and Patsy McLeod, um, and also what it was like to grow up as the grandchildren of Mary McLeod Bethune, um, because it's, it was not always the easy road. And, and so this book project has been in the makings for about 10 years. So, you know, it's hard to get stuff from your head to the paper and then push it out. And, but God tells you when it's time. That's right. That's right. Well, tell us a little bit about how it was to grow up, you know, with such a powerful legacy, you know, that you're part of. Just tell us about that. Well, you know, in Daytona, Daytona's a pretty small place, and I was born in the 50s. So we've gone through the segregation uh, to freedom of choice and to quasi, you know, integration, because we still haven't gotten there yet. And for people who believe that racism is dead, it's very much alive and institutionalized. Um, so, you know, what we experienced in Daytona was the best and the worst. Because when you're conscious, the worst really gets your attention. Because you recognize it when you see it. Right, right. Okay, Absolutely. so I grew up in a very conscious household. Um, so we knew what racism was. You know, after we became teenagers, we recognized it when we saw it. Um, we also understood that education was critical to uh, having a free mind. And not only do you have to gain knowledge, but you have to share knowledge. Because that's what my grandmother did. She didn't learn everything and then keep it to herself. Even in grade school, she came back and taught others. So, you know, it's very important. Uh, we grew up looking at a sign that said, enter to learn, depart to serve. So it has always been a part of my entire family to be of service in the community. And when they start to talk today about, you know, servant leadership, that's as natural for me as breathing. That's what I grew up with. My grandmother was a servant leader. Absolutely. You know, um, one of the things I talk about is before Malcolm and Martin, there was Mary. That's right. That's right. So a lot of what they built their platforms on were things that my grandmother helped to institutionalize. And so when we talk about her life, people talk about her public self, but they don't know her family. They don't know the inner workings of Mary McLeod Bethune when she came home and kicked her shoes off, you know, and they don't know the facade that she had to put on every day when she walked out because she had to go and play the game. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's very powerful. I, you know what I would like to find out from you in putting together this foundation with your brothers and with the project of the book coming out, what would you like to see this new generation come away with? Because I, I know, I remember reading about your grandmother and how powerful it was just reading all this wonderful history growing up, you know, in the 70s and what it, what it meant to me, you know, growing up in the 70s and the 80s. But for this generation, what would you like to see them receive from the foundation and from the book? To know that it's not about them. That's the greatest thing. You know, the greatest leadership that we have had, black, white, yellow, has, it, the leadership has always been grounded in it's not about me. Because when it becomes about you, you're not going to step out there 
to help somebody else. It's all about what you can put in your pocket, how you can shore up your peace, and that's selfish. It doesn't mean that you don't prosper. It doesn't mean that you don't grow and develop, but it means that you have an open spirit to help somebody else and that you don't do it based on whether you think they come from or what they look like or any of that. You do it because it's the right thing to do. And that's what my grandmother did. Um, when I talk to young people, I talk to them about knowing, not just accepting what somebody tells them. Because if you don't know for yourself, people can tell you anything. When they tell our children that they can't do math, it's, they accept it because they don't know that we discovered math. We created mathematics. It's on their DNA to be able to do math and science. But people can tell them they can't do it because we don't know our history. We don't know where our people come from. You know, and so we have to teach the old in order to have the new and to have it on solid ground. You know, and, and that we have a responsibility. If there are children out there that are not learning, that don't know who they are, it's our fault. It's our fault. You know, and like Les Brown said the other day, not on my watch. You know, and because things have happened on our watch, we have to fix it. So we have a very strong very strong uh, responsibility and I look at it also as an opportunity oh, yeah. to empower our youth and it's just you know when you look at uh, what we see in the media and just so many of the things that are happening growing up uh, I, I just you know I so I'm so fearful for our children today because the things that they're up against, we never had to even deal with. We dealt with other things, but, you know, with all the technology and everything that they have have coming at them, it's just such a different time. So I just, I just think it's so critical for them to know their history. That's why I'm so excited about your project and what you're doing. Our children have to be armed. We have to prepare them. Stop trying to protect them from all those little scary things because the scary things are going to be there and they're going to come and you can't be with them 24-7. So you have to give them tools so that when they're confronted, when the bad things come, they know how to deal with it. And they have something to, to hold on to, you know, because life is crazy. And today it's in their face. You know, and so very much in their face, and I think it's just about really arming them with the right tools. So that's that's what you know. I think is so powerful about your foundation and just the book, just knowing where um, they came from. You know, the history. We tell parents to stop trying to be your child's best friend. Your children don't need best friends; they need parents. And I, my mother used to tell us that she was our worst enemy, <laughs> and that wherever wow. we embarrassed her, she was embarrassing us. And she meant that, but she saved our lives because there were times when we were getting ready to step across into dangerous ground and we could hear her voice saying, I'm worse than that, so don't try me, <laughs> you know. And we thought yeah. she could see around walls and through, you know, through oh, yeah. buildings. Yeah. So because the neighborhood helped, the neighborhood was there. You know, we have to get back to that and we can't be scared to raise our children. But you also can't wait till they're 16 to decide that you're going to chastise them. Yes, that's true. And they're, they're just about grown at that point. And they have an attitude, right. you know. And a part of that is their creativity, their wanting to know, and us just not taking the time, you know. And we also have to be mentors. We have to decide that we are not too busy to put our hands on these children because they need to be guided and they want guidance. You know, many of them are raising themselves. They don't have somebody at home. So we have to step out of our space and be willing to do what somebody else did for us. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, Dr. Evelyn Fathum. Thank you, thank you so much. much. You. We've, you've been watching The Gold Profile. I'm Deborah Dixon. We've been interviewing Dr. Evelyn Bethune about all of her wonderful projects and her working on her grandmother's uh, book as well as the foundation. What's the name of the foundation? It's the Mary McLeod Bethune Educational Legacy Foundation. Okay, so if, they, if anybody wants to find out information about the foundation, would they go online? What's the best way? Well, they, we have a website. The website is intothelightllc.com. 
Uh, it has all of our information on it about the book and how to contact us. Great, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching The Gold Profile. Again, I'm Deborah Dixon. We're here at the Power Networking Conference. And if you want more information about our projects and our events and PR and marketing and all the new media stuff that we do, please go to our website at www.lightofgoldpr.com or call us at 646-278-5658. We still answer the phone. We don't do everything via email and via the website. Or you can call our Atlanta office, which is 404-212-1. Six, four, three. Stay tuned and stay blessed.